I've always, well, of course, I, I'd want to go to the mines. That's really the uh, culture that first got me in to uh, archaeology and just ancient culture in general was the Mayans and how mysterious they were. Yes. That's what got me hooked onto them is just the unanswered questions. And really, with all of these ancient cultures, there's so many unanswered questions. And that's why it's so fascinating because. I would like to hope that one day we have it all figured out. We discover everything, and we know. But that's not going to be the case, and we're just going to keep going and going. Uh, of course, Gobekli Tepe would always be good, but the pyramids is – if I don't ever get to go there and do anything fancy like y'all do, just to see them yeah. would be – yeah, it would be mind-blowing. I have friends that have went, and they, yeah. and they say it's like you're – it's it's like you're looking at a picture. It don't even seem real that somebody. What what was it about four thousand years ago? About forty five, forty six hundred, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah, for, yeah. For the for the pyramids at Giza. Yeah, and yeah. somebody that long ago with human hands, no mm -hmm. mechanics whatsoever, yeah. was able to build something like that. It's it's amazing. You mean it wasn't aliens? That's, <laughs> don't get know, me started down that <laughs> rabbit hole. I, the, it, uh, well. well what do you what do you think it was? I don't think that it was aliens. I I, I know it wasn't aliens, but really, I mean, what could they do? Because some of those stones come from what what was it? I think a five hundred miles away, something yeah. like that. It's well, crazy. It, you know, in reality, uh, uh, to be fair, we don't know. We don't know exactly how they built the pyramids. But what we can say, uh, in the last twenty years, one of the the most amazing discoveries related to pyramid science, if we want to use that term, mm -hmm. uh, is the the graves of the pyramid builders there in Giza. And so it, it is very clear that the pyramids were built uh, not by slaves, uh, not by aliens. It was the local <laughs> yeah. Egyptian uh, and Egyptian workers. We find their graffiti in the pyramids. Uh, the, the mystery, though, is how they did it. Uh, in... You have to have an amazingly motivated society, yeah. and it probably has to do with the belief of Pharaoh as, as deity or God and the importance of Pharaoh in the afterlife, you know, is probably what this great motivation comes from. Uh, and so they're, they're uh, amazing, obviously, probably the most famous uh, items left to us from ancient history. And I will tell you, if you've never been, it's worth a visit. Uh, yeah, so I've been once. Go. And I've been in the Great Pyramid, uh, and the only way I'd describe standing next to the Great Pyramid is like standing next to a stone mountain. That yeah. made sense to me, being from eastern Kentucky. It was like standing next to a stone mountain. Yeah, it's it's, it's really it's really that big. I mean, people yep. think like, oh, it's probably the size of the Pikeville parking garage or something like that. Yep. No, it is massive. Did you it's, ever go into any of the tombs or anything while you were there? Uh, I like to tell people my claim to fame from Egypt is I have been in King Tut's tomb alone with King Tut's mummy. Uh, which is not near, the reality is not near as impressive as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, when you go to the Valley of the Kings, you get a ticket to see three of the tombs, uh, but you don't get to see Tut's tomb. And uh, our tour guide, I was there on tour in 2007, basically said, it costs $50 extra. Don't pay it. If you've seen a picture, you've seen it. It's small. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Uh, it's maybe twice the size of the room we're sitting in. It's yeah. the actual tomb area. It's very small. And I said, you know what? I'll probably never be in Egypt again. I'm, if I walk in and turn around, I'm going to say I was in touch to him. So I paid my 50 bucks. And apparently all the tour guides tell everybody the same thing because I walk in and the guy guarding the place and me are the only people in there. Wow. And, and he doesn't speak a word of English and he shows me around and I'll never forget. He, he puts his arm around me and walks me over, stands me uh, over top of the sarcophagus. At this point, one of the goldest, golden sarcophagus uh, and Tut's mummy is still in the tomb. Now, they've moved them since, but when I was there, they were still in the tomb, and I'll never forget as long as I live, he puts his arm around me, looks me in the eye, and winks, and he leaves. So he leaves me alone in King Tut's tomb with just King Tut. And so, no, obviously, I couldn't hurt anything, yeah. uh, but it was an amazing experience. You know, this the goosebump kind of, wow, here's where I am in the world. Then when I walked out... Uh, I looked at him, and he smiled, and I smiled back, and I slipped him a 20 because I realized what it was about. The yeah. word is bakshish. It's a tip. Oh. <laughs> and, so, and it was worth every bit of yeah, it. Yeah, man. You know? I, so, I, I would have slipped him another 50. I mean, that is. Yeah. Did, did, so were you able to touch it or even no, get that gosh, close? No, yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. I would almost been scared. I mean, because well, yeah, the, the yeah. curse and, and all that from back in the day, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, hey, that was a pretty yeah. creepy yeah. ordeal. Yep. Yeah. I would, uh, out of respect, I would not have touched anything. 
And I couldn't have because yeah. the, 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 they had it covered in glass. Oh, okay. Uh, but, you know, the, the mummy's curse is always a, a, a fun topic of conversation with uh, the, the stuff from Egypt. And uh, there were several uh, deaths that were easily explained, but it made for good press. Oh, yeah, a lot of good <laughs> really press. Really good press. And there was a curse. So Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's— Which was typical of any tomb. Yeah, it's, it's such a fascinating culture, though, because it's still so mysterious. The, the, the Bible, that's why we are uh, able to go to, some, well, go to some of the sites like Shiloh and stuff like that and really know what we're looking at, and we have the text. But whenever you have cultures like Egypt or the Incas or yep. the Mayans, and the, the list goes on, you just, it's really a guessing game. It, ain't it the Incas that didn't have a written language? I think that's right. Yeah, it's, so, uh, so I mean, yeah. like, uh, what what's the uh, uh, Machu Picchu? Mm-hmm. They have no idea. Yeah. yeah. What, well, th- they know, like, when it was made, I think it was, like, it was around 1500, yep. yep. something like that. But yeah, just, it was built for like 100 years and then abandoned. I yep. have no idea. I love history because it's just one big guessing game. And, and that's true. And a lot of people, we, we hear, experts speak on television and, and, and on different different venues, uh, especially from an archaeological perspective. Uh, and we take things presented as absolute fact, uh, when in reality, uh, most of our, our knowledge of the ancient world is really our best educated guess. Mm-hmm. And there are so many good examples of situations that 100 years ago our educated guests is we realize was wrong. Yeah. Uh, And so that's the neat thing, you know, it's just, uh, as an attorney by trade, uh, I always say, you know, I like to hear that, but don't just give me your, this is it. Give me the evidence that backs it up. Why do we come to that conclusion? And in reality, is it a good conclusion? Is it foundational or is it on flimsy ground here you know so yeah it, it seemed to be when like at the beginning of the 1900s at least that was uh, unfortunately the case with a lot of archaeolog archaeolog archaeologists <laughs> y'all y'all <laughs> <laughs> but but if it didn't fit their narrative then they dismissed the evidence I, i've read quite a few stories where that's the case and it's unfortunate because now i mean we could have put ourselves way off track isn't that the case with the sphinx like we're better at dating stuff now and they think that uh, they might not have had water erosion figured out so the sphinx may be older than we thought yeah and so there's different areas of thought there and it's a good example of you know anything in science uh and we're talking about archaeology specifically we should be able to incorporate new evidence and that new evidence will either support or change previous theory. And sometimes it's, it's human nature. We tend to want to hang on to what we've been taught as yeah. fact. Uh, and so, you know, in some of these situations, uh, that's what happened. The certain theories would be rejected because it didn't meet uh, with the, this is the way it's always been. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is what I was taught when I was in school 50 years ago. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, I think to truly be a good archaeologist, we have to make our best educated determination with the information at hand and be willing to honestly reassess it mm-hmm. uh, when new information becomes available. And, you know, often that new information will will not change. More often than not, it will actually support and make stronger the previous mm-hmm. uh, uh, educated guess, we'll say, but where it maybe gives a different view we need to be willing to say let's back up and start over 